Hello, this is part two of this video on vectors, lines, and planes in 3D space. In this video, we're going to look at some different cases for two lines, whether they are parallel, coincident, or skew. What does that mean? We will look at um, some angles. We'll look at some more angles problems, and then we'll look at some more distance problems between point in a plane, skew lines, and parallel lines. So let's get into it. Let's start by talking about two lines. What does it mean for lines to be parallel, coincident, or skew? So to start off with, if we go back to our vector equation of a line, which is vector A plus T times vector D, A is the position vector of a point, any point on the line, and D is any vector parallel to that line. Now, if two lines are parallel, that would happen if their direction vectors are parallel. So if we call their direction vectors D1 and D2, if D1 is a scalar multiple of D2, so some scalar K times D2, then these lines will be parallel so long as they don't share any common points. If they do share a common point, then actually all points will be in common and they will actually be the same line. We call that coincident. So these are the two cases where the lines have the same direction vector. They can be parallel or coincident. If the lines uh, do not have the same direction vector, they can either be skew or intersecting. So intersecting, I guess, is a, is a more straightforward one. They intersect at exactly one point. Um, skew, there is no common point. Now, for, according to this diagram, it sort of looks like they will meet each other at some stage. But we're talking here about lines in 3D space, lines in 3D space. So it is possible for two lines uh, in 3D space to be non-parallel and also non-intersecting. If there's no common point uh, and if they're not parallel, we call them skew. In the first example, we'll show that these two lines, R1 and R2, are actually skew. So we need to show two things. Um, first, we need to show that the lines are not parallel. And that's quite easy because if we look at the direction vectors there, uh, clearly one is not a scalar multiple of the other. For example, two is two thirds of three, but negative one is not two thirds of zero. So there's no value of K that would satisfy this. And the next step we need to show is that there's no common point, so that they're non-intersecting. And that is a little bit harder. What we're gonna do is show that uh, the equation R1 of T and R2 of S has no solutions. You'll notice I've swapped out the uh, parameter there from T to S. And the reason is if I just set R1 of T equals R2 of T, now that may have no solution, but there may be a different two different T values for which these two lines have the same point. So I really want to differentiate between the parameters there. We can call them T1 or T2. I've just called them T and S. So we set up our three equations using the three components of each vector. So two plus two T from R1 is equal to two plus three S from R2. Similarly, one minus T is equal to two plus zero T. Well, that's just two. And negative one plus T is equal to zero minus uh, S. And I wanna show that these system of three equations has no solutions. So what I can do is probably start from that second equation because well, this, the second equation only has T in it. So I can easily see that T has to be negative one and then sub this back into another equation, say three to get a solution for S. So if I sub in negative one into equation three, I'll get S is equal to two. Now T is negative one and S is equal to two are the only values of S and T that satisfy equations two and three. So unless they satisfy equation one, um, this system has no solutions. And in fact, when we sub them into equation one, we'll find that this does not work. So there is no intersection. Uh, therefore, the lines are skew. So quite a bit of work there to show that there's no intersections with those two lines. Second example is multi-choice. Select a line that is parallel, but not coincident with this line given in parametric form. So we've got four options given in vector form. Um, feel free to pause the video. I encourage you to pause the video. Have a go at this yourself. Which one is parallel but not coincident? So what I'll do to the first step is take the parametric equations and rewrite them in vector form. So the constants three, three, and one here are going to form this uh, position vector and the coefficients of T are four, negative two, and two. That's the Z direction vector. So 
if one of these lines is going to be parallel, it must have a parallel direction vector. So I want parallel to 4, negative 2, 2. Um, well, A and B, clearly 3, 3, 1 is not a multiple of 4, negative 2, 2. So that's no good. We're down to options C and D. Both of those are actually multiples of 4, negative 2, 2. Okay, it's double or half or negative a half. Negative a half, I think. Okay, so C and D are both parallel. But now we need to check this point here. Is this a point on R of T? And actually, this point, 7, 1, 3, is on R of T. We will get that uh, if we sub in T is equal to 1. Okay, or we could solve the equations. 3 plus 4T equals 7. 3 minus 2T equals 1. 1 plus 2t equals 3. And we'll find they all have the same solution, which is t is equal to 1. Therefore, this line is actually the same line as r of t. It's parallel and it shares a point. But this point here is not on r of t. You could check. Um, so therefore, c is actually the parallel line. Next thing we'll look at is some angles. Uh, in the last pun, we did angle between a line and a plane using the scalar product with the normal vector. And then once we had that angle, we had to subtract from 90 degrees to get the angle between a line and a plane. So this one will do angle between two lines. Uh, I guess it's a more straightforward case because just like we find two direction vectors and then use the scalar product to find the angle. So here's an example. Find the acute angle between the lines R1 of T and R2 of T. Uh, give your answer in degrees to one decimal place. Uh, again, pause the video, have a go yourself. You can use your calculator for this one. So I'm using my scalar product formula with my two direction vectors, which are 1, 2, negative 1, and 0, negative 2, 5. Pretty much from there, we can just put it straight into the calculator. So here, um, I've defined them as A and B. And then uh, what I want to do is take the inverse cosine uh, on the top, dot product of A and B, on the bottom, uh, the length of A times the length of B. Uh, on the CAS calculator, remember, the length of a vector is the norm function. It is under the matrix and vector menu, but you can just type N-O-R-M. We get here 133 degrees, but if we think about two lines, if we maybe go back to this diagram, if I find an obtuse angle here, well, I can just subtract from 180 to get the acute angle. And actually, this question did ask for the acute angle. In general, we will give the acute angle. Next thing we'll do is angle between planes. Uh, for two planes, the angle between them is actually equal to the angle between the normal vectors. This is a little bit hard to visualize, and I have done a, another video um, on this earlier, so you can check that out if you like. But for now, you can just trust me. <laughs> what we want to do is find the two normal vectors, find the angle between those normal vectors. That will be equal to the angle between the two planes. So here's an example. We have two planes. 3x minus 2y plus z equals 1, 2x plus y plus 2z equals 5. So this is pretty similar process to the previous one, just that we're using the two normal vectors in our scalar product. Um, but again, we can just define them on the CAS calculator and then um, inverse cosine dot product. And there we are this time, 57.7 degrees. Moving right along here, now let's look at some distances. So there's several ways to do distance problems, but I like to do them using vector resolutes. I think it's a perfect method because the vector resolute, um, by definition, constructs a vector that is 90 degrees to another vector. And that's what we want when we're finding distance to it, whether it's a plane or a line. We want that distance to be perpendicular to the plane or line, so we get that minimum distance. So in this diagram, we've got an example of a point to a plane. And in this one, I will do using the scalar resolute. So if my point is A, I can take any point on the plane P. And then what I want is vector PA. And I want the scalar resolute of PA in the direction of the normal vector. That would just give me my distance straight away. If you're a little rusty on vector and scalar resolutes, I've done a previous video on that. I'll link to it up the top. But let's look at an example here. On the distance from the point A to the plane, 3x minus 2y plus z equals 1. So the first thing I want to do is get the normal vector just by these coefficients here will be 3, negative 2, 1. Now I can take any point on the plane. The really good thing, we can take any point at all. So if I let x and y be 0, well, z will be 1. We'll satisfy this equation. 
So the point 001 is definitely on this plane. But again, you could choose any point on the plane, that's fine. Now we have point A, we have point P, I want vector AP. So from A to P, uh, we need to subtract two, and then from zero to zero, just zero. From negative two to one, I will need to add three. So this is vector AP. Uh, now what I want is the scalar resolute of AP in the direction of the normal vector. Uh, you might notice up here I used PA. It's actually not going to matter because whether this is PA or AP, the length here is gonna be the same. So anyway, here I've done AP. As far as the calculation of that, again, we can use the calculator. I've defined AP, defined N the normal vector, and then dot product of AP with the unit vector of N. So unit V bracket N. Again, that's under the matrix and vector menu if you want. Notice here we get a negative. So scalar resolute can be negative, uh, but in this case, I don't really care. I just want the distance. So stick a modulus around it and the distance is three root 14 over 14. Next one we'll do is distance between skew lines. I think this one is really nice. Uh, again, if we draw a diagram, it's, it's a 2D diagram of a 3D situation. But what we want here is this distance to be perpendicular to both lines. Now in 2D, that doesn't work unless the lines are parallel. But in 3D, hopefully you can sort of imagine that it is possible for a line to be perpendicular to both of those. Now, how can I find the direction of this vector? I can take the cross product of the two direction vectors. Okay, because the cross product of these two direction vectors will give a third vector which is perpendicular to the first two. So taking the cross product of two negative one one and three zero negative one, I would get one five three. I've just done that on the calculator. Uh, and now once I have this normal vector, once I have the normal vector, what I can do then is take any point on R1, any point on R2. So just for example, sub in t equals zero, we get the position vector from the equation. Uh, I'll just show that, so two, one, negative one, this vector here, so position vector when t is equal to zero. And for the second one again, when t is equal to zero, we'll get two, two, zero. So, but any point would work. This is a nice thing. Um, so then I can work out vector a, b, so from a to b should be zero from two to two, one from one to two, and one from negative one to zero. So just be careful with your vector subtraction there. And you could do that on the calculator if you like as well. Um, so once we have that, then the distance again is the scalar resolute. So AB in the direction of the normal vector. So AB dot product of AB uh, with the unit vector. And in this case, eight root 35 over 35. So skew lines are another nice example of where we can use cross product and scalar resolute. Sorry about the poor diagram there. I actually do have another video where I've done a 3D diagram of this situation. So again, you can check that out if you like. And last example we'll do is distance between parallel lines. Now this one is actually a little bit more difficult. For two parallel lines, we don't really have a cross product. If we take the cross product of the two direction vectors, we'll get zero. So in this case, we don't really have a normal vector. And what we can do though, is still use vector resolutes. What we want is the perpendicular resolute. So again, any point, let's say A be any points on R1, B be any points on R2, we get vector AB. And then what we want is the perpendicular resolute of AB perpendicular to D2 or D1, doesn't matter. But let's say we do D2. So in order to find the perpendicular resolute, we first need to find the parallel resolute. That is AB dot D2 over D2 dot D2 times vector D2. Now this formula is not on your formula sheet, so if you don't know it, you should know it uh, or put it in your notes. But once we know the formula, we can evaluate it on, on the CAS calculator again. So we can define vector AB, define vector D, and then dot product of AB and D, dot product of D and D times vector D. So this U here is the parallel resolute. To get from the parallel resolute to the perpendicular resolute, we'll use vector subtraction. Okay, AB minus vector D will give us this perpendicular resolute here. Oh, sorry, AB minus vector U. Again, we've already got AB, uh, we've just found vector U. So we want the length there of AB minus U so on the CAS that's norm, and there we are. So parallel lines uh, will be similar from a point to a line. Can't use a normal vector, but we can use a perpendicular vector resolute.
That's it for now. Lots of things for you to practice. Good luck.